Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rupa Health YouTube channel. My name is Jillian Poles, and I'm a researcher in the Department of Medicine at NYU Langone Health. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the BUN, or blood urea nitrogen, to creatinine ratio. First, I'll give an overview of renal physiology and what each metric means as it pertains to human health. Then I'm going to go through how we obtain the BUN to creatinine ratio in the clinic and in the lab. And finally, I will run through what an overly high or overly low BUN to creatinine ratio actually means for our patient. So first off, let's go ahead and just do a quick overview of renal physiology so that we have a good foundation for the significance of BUN and creatinine. So as we know, the kidneys are crucial for filtering waste products out of the blood, including things like creatinine. And so therefore, any disruption to kidney function may lead to imbalances in creatinine and blood urea nitrogen. Each of our kidneys contains approximately 1 million of these little tiny filtration units known as the nephron. And that's where we get nephrology, referring to the practice of renal medicine. And so within each of these nephrons is a tubule and then the actual filter component known as the glomerulus. So on a very basic level, the way that this functions is the glomerulus takes things that we don't need out of the blood and filters them out and we excrete them through the urine. And then the tubule will take things that we need and return them to the blood. And so those are things like water, glucose, amino acids etc. So speaking of amino acids, when we metabolize our dietary protein into the smaller amino acid building blocks, we produce ammonia as a byproduct. And if we know the chemical formula of ammonia is NH2, it's clear that part of this is the production of nitrogen as waste. And so this nitrogen can go ahead and bind to other elements such as carbon, and that is when it produces urea, which needs to be filtered out. So the urea travels from the liver into the circulation back to the kidneys to be filtered out. So in the case of healthy kidneys, this is exactly what happens. So these waste products, including the urea, go back to the kidneys and are excreted out just fine in the urine. However, in cases of kidney damage, whether it be shock, dehydration, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, whatever it may be, we may have defects in our ability to actually remove that urea and excrete it into the blood. So therefore, put together our blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, reflects the balance between our body's production of urea and our kidney's ability to eliminate it. In addition to kidney damage, it's important to keep in mind that there are individual factors that may influence BUN, such as protein intake, dehydration status, etc. So now, what is creatinine? Creatinine is a completely different waste product. Creatinine is actually produced by the natural breakdown of naturally occurring creatine phosphate that is within everyone's muscle. So we know that, yes, this gets broken down during exercise, but it's actually also broken down at a relatively constant rate at rest. And so our kidneys are kind of constantly filtering this out of the blood. Therefore, in most healthy individuals, this serum or blood creatinine is going to be a pretty good indicator of our kidney function since everyone is experiencing this natural breakdown and excretion of the creatinine. One exception and I mentioned this in the video that I did on creatine supplementation and muscle physiology on this same channel. The exception would be individuals who supplement creatine for any variety of reasons. I am one of them. I supplement because I do competitive powerlifting and it can help with very, very repeated high intensity bouts of exercise. So for me, my blood creatinine is probably elevated compared to reference standards. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that I have poor kidney function, and I certainly hope I don't. So in healthy individuals and or those not supplementing creatine, any pathological chronic deviations in creatinine can indicate certain ailments. So a pathologically high blood creatinine may indicate impaired renal function or glomerular filtration, anything of that sort. Whereas pathologically chronically low creatinine could indicate low muscle mass, reduced renal perfusion, or even liver disease. 
So hopefully now we can understand that both the blood urea nitrogen and the blood creatinine are both individual indicators of kidney function. And they are indicative of two different waste products, but are both still very important. And therefore, the ratio of the two can tell us a lot about kidney function. One absolutely crucial thing that we need to keep in mind when we contextualize the BUN to creatinine ratio in the clinic is that the relationship between BUN and creatinine is not linear. What does this mean? This means that changes in this ratio do not actually appear until about 50% or more of renal function has been lost. So this is to say someone maybe at 40% loss of function from baseline may not reflect changes in this ratio, even though they do need to be treated for some sort of kidney impairment. This can happen with early stages of renal failure. We might get a false negative diagnosis if we rely solely on the BUN to creatinine ratio. However, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. On the flip side, once we breach that 50% and we start seeing changes in the ratio, further small changes in kidney function can lead to great changes in the BUN to creatinine ratio. So, it can be very helpful for monitoring patient progress closely once they've breached that 50% loss of function. So overall, although no test is perfect, the BUN to creatinine ratio can be useful to guide treatment decisions as it pertains to kidney function. So how do you actually obtain this BUN to creatinine in the clinic and or lab? So number one consideration, as with many metabolic tests, if you're using it as diagnostic criteria, you want the patient to be fasted 8 to 12 hours prior to testing. Another important consideration is the current tests for BUN, to my knowledge, are only in serum, whereas the creatinine can be measured in either plasma or serum. But since we want to get the ratio of both, we want to measure them both at the same time. So ideally, if you're getting the BUN to creatinine ratio, you're going to want to collect serum. So first perform venipuncture, collect that whole blood. We're going to want that tiger top too with the claw activation and serum separation. We spin to collect the serum in the supernatant because hemoglobin, giving it that red color, can interfere with the test since a lot of them are often color metric. So for the clinician, it's, it's as simple as performing venipuncture into a tiger top tube with that clot activator and serum separator so that when they go to the lab, they can go ahead and spin to collect serum in the supernatant. So when measuring blood urea nitrogen in the lab from serum, there are two different kind of kits or reactions that are often used. So the first reaction that we can take advantage of is called the diacetyl reaction. And this is essentially the ammonia in the urea reacts with alpha ketoglutaric acid and it produces this yellow chromogen, which can then be read using a colorimetric assay. So the second method is called the astrosystem, and essentially we get urea into solution where it is hydrolyzed and there is a change in conductivity rather than color that gets measured depending on the amount of urea that is present. Whichever method you use is going to give you a blood urea nitrogen concentration in milligrams per deciliter. Moving on to the measurement of the blood creatinine from serum, we also have two methods here. So our first method for determining blood creatinine from serum is something known as the Jaff reaction. And this is just another color metric assay where you go ahead and co-incubate the serum sample with picric acid in this alkaline environment at a room temperature for 15 minutes. You get this formation of this kind of reddish orangish complex. So the rate of increase in absorbance at 520 nanometers is directly proportional to the amount of creatinine in the serum. This second method is this enzymatic procedure and is actually known to be a bit more precise and even more fast than the Jaff reaction. Essentially, you just combine creatinine with creatinine aminohydrolase and this hydrolysis creates creatine 
which then reacts with creatine kinase and causes this reaction that you can measure at 340 nanometer absorbance. So whichever way you do this, you also get your creatinine in milligrams per deciliter. And since we've obtained both the blood urea nitrogen and creatinine both in mix per deciliter, we can just go ahead and take the quotient to get the BUN to creatinine ratio. So what do we want in a normal BUN to creatinine ratio? Again, take the word normal with a grain of salt. We know that we're just referring to healthy kidney function, but keep in mind that this may vary based on individual differences in lifestyle, whether it be protein intake, exercise, hydration, etc. So for a normal healthy individual who is eating about 70 grams of protein per day, they're producing about 12 grams of urea per day from those 70 grams of protein that they consume. We are expecting a range anywhere between 10 to 1 to 20 to 1 for healthy kidney function. And of course, while we all want to resort to Occam's razor a lot of the time, please keep in mind that deviations in this ratio, while they may indicate issues with kidneys, it can be something just completely pre-renal or even post-renal that's causing this, things like heart failure or liver disease. So it's important to not just pick the first explanation that we can think of. However, there are some common explanations or causes for dangerously high or low levels of BUN to creatinine. I gave kind of a quick summary at the beginning, but let's dive deeper into what conditions can cause this and how. So let's talk about what a dangerously high BUN to creatinine ratio would be. Again, for your average person, this is elevations beyond a ratio of 20 to 1. So thinking most simply, elevations in the BUN to creatinine ratio past 20 to 1 could just indicate something like impaired kidney function, whether it's maybe impaired GFR, something like that, that is decreasing the clearance of either BUN or both BUN and creatinine to create a larger quotient. Another factor could be dehydration, whether it's due to insufficient water intake or maybe great fluid loss without sufficient replenishment, whatever it may be. Uh, this can lead to concentrations in our blood urea nitrogen and blood creatinine, and this could make it more difficult to clear them. Another explanation for this is just some sort of acute kidney injury, and this can be due to dehydration. It could lead to impaired renal perfusion due to a loss of plasma volume. This can even be things like just exposure to nephrotoxic drugs. Any sort of acute kidney injury you can imagine can lead to an elevation in the BUN to creatinine ratio. Like I mentioned, this can be due to things that actually don't directly relate to the kidneys. One example could be something like congestive heart failure where you get just inadequate renal perfusion due to reductions in cardiac output. Hyperthyroidism we know can lead to elevations in muscle breakdown down and we know that that would lead to elevations in blood creatinine levels. Things like severe GI bleeds even can cause this where proteins from the blood like hemoglobin can be absorbed and metabolized by the liver leading to these elevations in blood urea nitrogen and also decrease renal perfusion. Things like urinary tract obstructions like kidney stones and or tumors, things like that can lead to decreased excretion to decrease urine output. And as I mentioned, individual variations in protein intake, I aim for about one gram per pound body weight, which is definitely higher than the average individual. Individuals like myself will exhibit elevations in BUN, maybe slight elevations in the creatinine as well. What's causing low BUN to creatinine ratio? We know that a low BUN to creatinine ratio can occur either through decreases in BUN or increases in creatinine. Well, on the, on the flip side, I mentioned high protein intake can elevate the BUN and elevate the ratio. So it, it stands to reason that the reverse would be true where low protein intake due to poor dietary intake, malabsorption, etc., 
can lead to decreases in the BUN and a lower ratio. Cases of liver disease or impaired liver function can alter our production of urea, perhaps decreasing that blood urea nitrogen due to changes in the metabolism of urea and ammonia. Pregnancy can lead to increases in blood volume and, as we know, fluid retention, which can therefore dilute our BUN levels and decrease the BUN to creatinine ratio. Cases of severe muscle wasting can lead to a low BUN to creatinine ratio. These can be things like rhabdomyolysis or even just severe burns, we get increased muscle breakdown, which alters the creatinine rather than altering the BUN. But we have this increased creatinine production from the muscle breakdown and therefore a decrease in the BUN to creatinine ratio. So from what I've just explained, hopefully you can appreciate that while changes in the BUN to creatinine ratio may be due to benign things such as pregnancy or protein intake, they can also be life-threatening. So clearly, regular monitoring of kidney function through this ratio, as well as many other tests, is crucial. And this can include things like imaging or renal function testing to actually try to assess kidney function or determine if there are any extra renal causes for deviations in this ratio. So once we identify a deviation in that ratio, it's go time to try to identify that root cause as fast as you can to guide appropriate and timely treatment. So your inpatient treatment decisions are highly variable based on what you have in front of you, but generally outpatient, we can improve this ratio and improve kidney function through things like lifestyle change. And as you can imagine, that can include things like really, really, really encouraging good hydration. What I learned way back in the day when I was learning about hydration is that you want your urine to look like Chardonnay. That one really stuck with me from undergrad and I tell it to everyone that I can think of. So that's a good one for hydration. And then in individuals who may have just a chronic kidney disease and they're living out patient, lifestyle changes like limiting red meat, processed meat consumption, eating plant-based, we know that all of these things can tend to lead to improvements in kidney function in those who need it. We want to make sure that we're monitoring the treatment response, optimizing function, and hopefully minimizing the risk of long-term complications. And fortunately, the BUN creatinine ratio can help get us there. So whether you are a clinician, lab technician, a scientist, a student, or just a lover of renal physiology, I hope that you were able to take away something useful from this video today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the rest of the Rupa Health YouTube channel and the Root Cause Medicine podcast for more content just like this. Hey, thanks for watching our video. If you order a lab test for your medical practice, head over to rootbehealth.com to order hundreds of different labs from over 35 different lab companies, including Dutch, Dr. Zeta, Mosaic, and more.